let's make a plan together okay where we work with as partners to you to help you get that dream job in a hedge fund mutual fund especially the interview series so that you understand what are the kind of questions that come up for the interviews in this third cheat sheet fund interview session let's explore some of the questions from question number 21 to question number 30 that could potentially come up at fund interviews the three pillars of any interview format especially at fund interviews are accounting if you're applying for an accounting job and because it's all about money honey you must know very thoroughly the principles of accounting the second pillar is of course economics and markets the last four years have been so fascinating for economics especially since interest rate cycles have have gone up have gone down the markets have dealt with covid situations and the new beast on the block called cryptocurrencies has also made a mark the third pillar is of course your own self what is it that you want when you apply for a job at fund houses why do you choose a finance job in a fund house why not any other banking institution or a non banking company so your own personal objectives and missions to understanding the questions that could be asked at some of these fund houses include what is working capital okay now this is a very tricky question i'll tell you why because to many people working capital means different things so you got to explain this from the perspective of accounting as well as from corporate okay the first point you must include is working capital is short term assets minus short term liabilities so in accounting we spend a lot of time talking about short term medium term and long term okay so this time horizon that we add to any of the classification of assets or liabilities is very very crucial in accounting and i'll tell you why because accounting generally tends to give a reflection of how the mindset is okay at a very simple uh, at a very simple level let's explain for example if you are a 10th grader student and you are appearing for your board exams which are going to take place after 8 months yeah that's like a medium term plan that you prepare for 8 months but if you're preparing for your competitive entrance exams after a period of 2 years then that's like a long term plan and then your day to day studies is a short term plan some kind of assessments some kind of assessments etc so that's the meaning of short term medium term and long term so short term assets which include inventory accounts receivables is that higher than short term liabilities okay so what is an asset an asset is something that generates revenues for the owner correct so why is inventory an asset because inventory can be sold it will generate revenue for the company so it's a short term asset if it is unsold then you get all the sales that you, all the sales that you get on mintra ajio black friday sales etc minus short term liabilities short term liabilities means commitments that you have to pay within the next 60 days 90 days depending on your own credit cycle if short term assets is greater than short term liabilities you end up with a positive number or a negative number obviously a positive number if short term assets is greater than short term liabilities then you have a positive working capital that means you need to raise money okay from the banks and from short term money market instruments it shows the flow of funds over a short period of time this short period of time could be 30 days 60 days depending entirely upon what is the credit cycle of the company a question that can be asked what is the difference between balance sheet and profit and loss statement very interesting question because they want to understand whether you are understanding classification of items between the two of them balance sheet is a statement of assets and liabilities as on a particular date okay for a company assets is something that they own that generates revenues and that has rupee value for a company liabilities are something that they owe that they have to pay money on and it of course has a rupee value profit and loss is also called as the revenue statement or the income statement it shows the transactions which use these assets and liabilities 
okay and then integrating the two making the story together making point to point into a beautiful story is the cash flow because it links the two statements by demonstrating how those revenues came from where did it come how do those debtors come how did profits get incurred all this is explained by the cash flow so all these three statements are very important to understand from a finance point of view <clears throat> often you see expenses are incurred so when do you capitalize an expense rather than expense a purchase okay now this is a tricky little question it's like i'm going to <clears throat> ajio.com or mintra.com and searching which is this item to be bought visa is going to buy an mg hector car okay <coughs> excuse me sorry you identify the intent of the purchase <clears throat> if the asset is going to be used beyond one year please go ahead and capitalize the expense <clears throat> if on the other hand it's going to be used within a period of one year assign it to pnl now this depends upon a business if you are maruti suzuki an automobile company that's continuously buying auto in you know, automobile parts and selling automobiles etc or your, your travel agency which continuously buys it's a part of your business then buying a car of course is part of the business so these are all interpretative and it would help if you explain the interpretation to the interviewer question number 24 have you heard of the word stock split <laughs> and how is it different from bonus so since many of you all may have already heard it you go just straight into explanation of what is the difference stock split is in the face value of the stock is reduced let's say from 10 rupees to 1 rupee 10 rupees to 2 rupees etc the number of stocks increase the value of the holding remains the same bonus is when an investor gets additional shares for which he doesn't have to pay any money the face value doesn't get reduced the price of the share gets reduced because the number of shares in the market has increased and therefore impact of either stock split or bonus is unchanged okay so you can always give explanations further explanations about entitlement ratio and so on and so forth what do you understand from the term liquidity ah uh, liquidity means many things to many people right so let's understand it from an investor's perspective from an investor's perspective liquidity is when they have the ability and the ease to convert the assets into cash as simple as that yeah you have stocks which you can convert today if the sebi uh, ability sebi circular and going to to t plus 0 works out fine then we're going to have a end of day cash balance right today you still get the money from selling stock only after one day but if sebi says t plus 0 then we can actually get it within the same day So liquidity is how easily you can sell it off. If on the other hand you go to OTC market and you find an exotic derivative option, stock shop, stock option, okay, stop option, okay, or swap option, and things like that, then you have to find out how they work together. From company's perspective, liquidity is the ability to meet contractual obligations in a timely manner. The company has to pay rent. for the premises that it occupies on the 5th of every month that's a contractual obligation right and it must make that payment on the 5th of every month this means that it has liquidity issues if it's not able to make the payments like for example we had the case of jet airways which uh, had liquidity problems and therefore had to uh, shut down its operations because it did, it couldn't pay its suppliers of fuel on time what is the liquidity for a <laughs> hostelite or a bachelor okay for the hostelite or the bachelor mama papa have to fund him throughout you know for the course and therefore liquidity is like an open tap all right he doesn't have to earn anything because he is a student or whatever and then mama papa always to the rescue for them <laughs> you must have heard of monetary policy and interest rates so what is your understanding of that okay so your understanding of monetary policy and interest rates monetary policy is designed and announced by the central bank the main objective of it is to control inflation and to have currency stability 
quantitative tools like bank rate, OMOs, etc. are used to control inflation. We also have qualitative tools that are used to help build currency stability. Okay, you are traveling to the US and you need $10,000 for your trip. The bank gives a rate of $1 is equal to INR 83.84. Which rate is applicable and how much rupees will you get? Would be the extension of this question. Let's take a look at that. USD is equal to INR 83.84. That is the bid ask rate. That means the bank will buy dollars at 83 and the bank will sell you dollars at 84. Bid means the rate at which they buy. Ask is the rate at which they sell. Okay? The bank will buy USD at 83 and the bank will sell USD at 84. Since the bank is taking your rupees and giving you dollars, they're selling you dollars, they will convert it at the rate of 84 rupees to a dollar. Make sense? Okay, great. Same example continues. Oh, wow. <laughs> you bought the USD, but a week later your trip is cancelled. Oh, no. So sad. Okay. The USD is now the rate today on the cancellation of your trip. You have this $10,000. You don't know what to do with it. You're afraid of robbers. You're afraid of so many other things. You want to go and convert it back into rupees because you don't know when is the next trip going to take place. So the bank will buy dollars at 81 and the bank will sell dollars at 82. The bank will buy dollars from you at 81. Okay? Because now you're going to convert the dollars into rupees. They will buy from you at 81. Unfortunately for you, this is a loss because you have bought dollars at a higher rate. You're selling the dollars at 82. You've made a loss. Double loss. The second loss is the loss of the trip. Okay? So not only have you suffered emotional damage, emotional emotional atyachar as they call it, from the loss of trip, but also it could be that you have lost because of the difference in what is called as the bid-ask spread. Okay? Oh, I love to ask this question. What do you understand by time management and how do you like to plan your daily schedule? Okay? In your daily schedule, in your timely management, you should have a healthy mix of work, family and pleasure if you don't have this healthy mix of all three you are not doing yourself a great favor okay so time management is equal contribution as just you know uh, to all the three of them for example when there is exams right you have to study more does that mean you play zero no 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 you play less i didn't say you play zero so this dynamic movement between play and games play and study is very important if on the other hand your exam is six months away you want to play some more you want to have some more fun some have go go for picnics go on vacations play with your friends go out and have that match of soccer go out and have that game of cricket go out and play the chess game that is called as having a proper time management equal distribution i didn't say proportionate distribution of time across various activities will give you a great sense of time management. What is your biggest strength? <laughs> Be prepared for this question because every interviewer is going to ask you this question. They will ask you what is your biggest weakness. They will ask you what is your biggest strength. If you don't have an answer for that, then you will not be able to answer this question on that on the spot and you know you don't want to say stupid things like my biggest strength is i'm a born leader and things like that you all just say things like you have initiative you would like to complete stuff by deadlines deadlines matter to you or your biggest strength is that you practice your hobby every day one one interview actually said uh, i have a hobby of playing guitar and despite having done uh, extremely rigorous courses i always make it a practice to you know, to spend some time on my hobby, which is playing guitar. So that's a strength for him because he knows how to manage his time very well. Thank you so much for listening in. And let's look at what's going to happen in the next interview, fund interview, cheat sheet number four. Thank you.